It's the criterion. It's the criterion. 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 N. 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 Hey everybody. So I just wanted to give a little uh, warning, I guess, on this one, uh, this episode. Uh, we uh, recorded it and it turned out that uh, Conrado's vocals were very, very soft, even though we had double recorded it on his side as well. Still, it was just really bad luck. And so we had to, with the help of Michael Laurent, uh, we had to do some finagling and so that's why sometimes things are a little shaky and sometimes you can hear my breathing louder than normal. It's not perfect, but we felt like it was interesting enough discussion and uh, it was good enough to uh, listen to and to be part of the discussion. So sorry about that, but I hope you still enjoy it and let us know what you think of Grey Gardens. Hello, everybody. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Joe, this is one of your favorite movies. I am so excited that we're talking about it. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about Great Gardens and what do you like so much? Okay. Yeah. So this is a documentary about uh, e Edith, or Big Edie and Little Edie uh, Beale uh, that they're in the, uh, uh, the Hamptons in, uh, in New York in the 1970s. And they're living in this dilapidated old estate called Grey Gardens. And it's a mother and daughter. And it basically is a kind of a, uh, a it's a experimental documentary, I guess you might say, uh, of following these two women around. And their, uh, their house has raccoons and is dilapidated. And I guess what I love about it is I think particularly little Edie, I, I just relate to her so much. I think that in uh, life, a lot of times things don't turn out the way that we wish they had. And there's a sort of a bittersweet element to little Edie. And, uh, but I really admire the way that she just smiles and she still chooses to dance and still chooses to sing and I don't know there's just a, I just think she's a lovely human and I feel like every time I watch it I kind of pick up on a new line I think it's really quotable I think these two ladies are funny I think they're sad I think they're just I don't know there's so many documentaries and movies that are made with this agenda that you have to agree with the movie makers on issues or and I guess those kind of documentaries have their place but I just kind of love the way that this is just presenting these two women and uh, their crazy life and I I don't know I just admire the fact that someone like little Edie she's the type of person that can lose her hair and yet turns it into becoming a fashion icon and I mean, how many people can say something that's that devastating, especially to a woman of that era in that position, can can do something like that? And so, I I really just love it. I think it's great, and I know it's weird, and it's probably not for everybody, but it's uh, I don't know. I just think it's really special. And uh, so there you go. Okay, already I think I have so many things that I want to say so many I think what you're saying is fascinating because um this is the first time for me watching the movie and uh I have I had a very strange uh sort of mixed reaction in a way um so here's here's what happened um so uh, documentaries I have a lot of thoughts about documentaries in general and I have mm -hmm. Uh, issues with a lot of documentaries um so when i was in uh, college doing my undergrad um i had a class called um what was that class called it had a really long complicated name like <laughs> images of resistance in the developing world or something like that and that was um, taught by a woman named carolyn strohan and she is a documentary filmmaker so we spent a lot of time talking about documentaries and she has made documentaries of her own and and she uh hates this type of documentary absolutely uh. 
hates the Maisels and she hates Frederick Wiseman and she and she's really against, which is something that I uh, kind of agree with her in some ways. The idea that you would just present something as the truth or like as something objective, an objective point of view, and you would try to remove the the view and the point of view of the filmmaker from it, which I think is my problem with a lot of documentaries and and what is. Uh, the documentaries that I tend to like tend to have the 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 documentarians uh, make themselves part of the story, not just to like be in front of the camera, but like to um, to recognize that what they're saying is, is still subjective, even though they're working from the from the, from things that happen in real life, you know. Um, and I think that's something that I struggled with with Grace Gardens. Because I agree with you that a lot of it is hilarious. I think Little Edie, um, especially, is is the fascinating character, and so is Big Edie, really. Um, and what they and the their whole situation and their lives is like, it's impossible to look away because she's just so unique and 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 weird and charismatic in her own way. Yeah. But at the same time, I was kind of wondering the whole time. What am I supposed to make of of this person and of these two people who are like clearly to me have such a have like some sort of uh, I don't know I mean I'm not a doctor or anything but it seemed to me like they had some sort of like mental issues going on or something was like really uh, going on in the, in what was happening with them and I was wondering are we supposed to is it okay that we're looking at them just like they're like an experiment or, or are the filmmakers with them or are they not? Like, what do the Maisels want us to get out of it? And I think, so a little bit on the opposite side from you, I feel like you have a very clear connection to how you feel about about this movie and about these characters, or I guess. It's just mm-hmm. really, um, and I, on the other hand, was kind of like very uncomfortable trying to figure out what am I supposed to make out of this, you know? Um, I don't know, but I do really, appreciate what you're saying about little Edie so uh, maybe you can talk a little bit more about it what do you connect it with um, and what do you think the the filmmaker's intention is well I mean I think that I would feel maybe more conflicted about it if I feel if I felt like she was being manipulated by the filmmakers but I don't I think she's completely in on it from the beginning she's absolutely performing she's she's uh she's tr- giving them lines she's hamming it up uh, she's completely i think as maybe less so her mom a little bit but i think she is 100 percent basically kind of directing the movie uh and, and giving and so i i would feel like i said i would feel more conflicted if i felt like they were kind of and, you know, taking an innocent and sort of manipulating their words or, you know, that kind of a thing. Uh, but, uh, but I, I don't know. I just love the fact that she, uh, even, even in that kind of performance that she's doing in front of the camera, she's taking a, a horrible, you know, kind of situation and her, the obvious, obvious disappointment of her life and just choosing to, choosing to smile choosing to uh to be a staunch woman Uh, that's one of my favorite lines and in dealing with me the relatives didn't know that they were dealing with a staunch character and (laughs) i and so that's what i admire about her is just that she, she you know life in our lives we can be given disappointment and and sort of metaphorical trash that we have to deal with and you can choose to be a little edgy about it and smile and uh and make the best out of it <laughs> and uh or you can you know let it let it sink you and uh so that's kind of how i i look at it as and i love their relationship <laughs> i think uh as being somebody who has uh three sisters and obviously a mother everybody has a mother but i don't know i feel like i can relate to that sort of dynamic uh, between the the two two of them that they're in the end completely uh attached at the hip uh they're but they're they're uh completely frustrated by that but also completely 
uh, they completely need it at the same time. So I, I definitely can relate to that. I, I, I don't know. And I even like little things like you see sort of the passing of time by the wall, <laughs> the raccoon eating the wall. I like that. I like, uh, I, that, uh, I don't I like their relationship between the Maisels. I think that there's some funny sort of give and take. I, I even like uh, Jerry. <laughs> and the, I think there's some funny kind of parts in there. As somebody described it as a real life John Waters movie. I think that's actually a pretty valid description. <laughs> uh, I love the music in it. Uh, it's, it's really fun. So I don't know. Those are some of the things. I think it's really, I think it's kind of fascinating that, that you find so much, I guess, inspiration and, and hope and, and actually in a lot of things that I had very different reactions to. So I think this is very interesting um, because I'm thinking of, for example, when, when little Edie dances or when um, the mom sings, um, I, I wondered, um, especially when Edie was dancing, like when she does the little dance with the, with the little American flag, for example, um, her sort of military dance. Um, there was a part of me that was, the, that was thinking, I mean, it, it, is, it is very funny and she seems to be having a good time, but I was also thinking, are we laughing uh, at her or are we laughing with her? And, and you know, also I, I see kind of, what you say of them, of her putting on a smile and just like, you know, bearing, finding a way to, to cope with like all the frustrations of, of her life. Uh, it seems also like a very, it's a, also a very sad thing at the same time, right? They're like in this dilapidated house. They seem to be quite, in my opinion, um, delusional about like, what they can or can't do anymore and, and the kind of life that they're having and I don't know it seems to me like there's like this like pathetic layer to it on top of everything else so that, that's basically my, my uh, but I kind of like that I like the bittersweet kind of element to it that uh, that there's this uh, and I think because I think they know that and I mean, she even says uh, that, you know, little Edie says you can't have your cake and eat it too. And then big Edie says, oh yes, I did. I did have my cake. I loved it. I masticated it. I chewed it and had every, <laughs> and had everything I wanted. I, I don't know. I just love, I love that. I think that's so perfect. And, uh, uh, and I love like little moments where, where little Edie says, mother wanted me to come out in a kimono, so we had quite a fight. <laughs> yeah. That's really good. And uh, I, I... I mean, they're definitely, I will, <laughs> I, I'm in complete agreement with you that they're two fascinating, incredibly, uh, you know, compelling people to watch on camera. There is no question about it. And what they say is so funny some of the times, and it's just hilarious in it. And you know, you just, you can't, I couldn't look away, even though I was feeling sometimes uncomfortable by my looking. Um, yeah. I mean, maybe that's interesting in its own way. Yeah, I think so. I think that it is that mixture. As I read an article by Rufus Wainwright uh, on this, and he, he said, because he, he'd written a song, I guess, about Grey Gardens, and he said, says it's a perfect mix of both camp ridiculousness and deep emotionality it wavers between this sordid tale of destruction with a noble spirit attached to it though it never quite rests on either one of those philosoph never quite rests on either of those philosophies you can watch it as a fun ridiculous film or as a serious and touching movie about a mother and a daughter hmm. yeah and I, so I, yeah, I think that that, that's part of it, why it works is because it is this, there is that bit of uncomfortableness. It, there is that bit of, and there is that bit of a, of a car wreck that you can't help but pay attention to and look at. But at the same time, they're still in the end choosing to 
to smile in that car wreck you know like a lot there's a lot of car wreck lives that uh, are just kind of miserable and i think if you're going to be crazy uh and i don't know I, I there's just a certain argument to be made for i don't know choosing the crazy <laughs> if that makes sense like this is something that that they have little to no control over at this point like the only thing that she could have done big ed is to move from gray gardens and they could have done that uh and so that was i guess their mis their mistake but as far as a lot of the stuff that happened is stuff that they really didn't have a whole lot of control over of what happened and so they i don't know just choose to be kind of nutty and funny and uh and uh, so it, it's also could be seen as kind of a little bit of a redemption story in a way <laughs> especially with how how big it ended up becoming which nobody could have ever seen yeah I, yeah i mean i'm starting to see what you mean i'm starting to see um how it's kind of uh, how it's so valued as a or it has been valued by so many people as a, as a story of making whatever you can out of a of a terrible situation right and and there's definitely an element of a lot of pathos in the idea of these people who are who are in such ruin and in such a weird place and who definitely cannot access the kind of life that they once had and the kind of life that they would like to have so they try to make a some sort of mock version of it that is completely yeah different from you know it's like so strange and it's very sad and it's very funny at the same time so it's a lot of complex emotions and maybe this is a good place to go into the next um mm. section of our of our episode which is talking about what do we think make this movie a criterion collection movie? i think it's just so quirky it's so different and so it's such a game changer as far as uh, you know being a cult type film that grew and uh, that uh, it, you know sort of showcases that sort of Andy Warhol sort of era of uh, art and uh, uh, so I, I think that uh, that yeah it just screams criterion to me in many ways. Yeah, I mean obviously the Maisels uh, are very well respected. Um movie uh, filmmakers you know um so it makes sense that they would have a place in the criterion collection they're also very influential and, and have their historical importance the movie itself like you say had a huge impact in in a lot of communities um especially in like i feel like it's a very seminal piece of like gay and mm -hmm. queer culture um obviously you mentioned rufus wainwright who is a gay a musician who wrote a song and it was inspired by it um you had one of the most um uh, one of the most memorable impressions on rupaul's drag race for people who watched that show was when the drag queen jinx monsoon dressed up as little edie and, oh really yeah and it was, it's one of the mo the best moments um she won that challenge that episode um i love rupaul's drag race and that's one of the first times that i encountered um great gardens there's also a very iconic scene in Gilmore Girls where they watch it. Yeah. Which is perfect because it's about a mother and a daughter. And, and uh, so, yeah. Definitely. Um, and of course, and you, you were on Twitter this morning and a lot, critic Alonso Dural, there was commenting on how a little Edie is sort of a, is a fashion icon, you know. Yeah. Um, there's all the, they, this movie definitely has a place in the culture. And I think it's, definitely has a place in the collection um in on in the special uh special features on criterion channel they have an interview with todd oldman fashion designer todd oldman uh, about how it's something that's he watches frequently uh it's something they talk about frequently uh it, it was you know big influence on him and uh in that he's seen a lot of people try to kind of ape uh, eat little Edie's fashion, and he says he feels like most of them always do it badly, which is interesting. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so the, anyway, if people want to check that out, it's pretty fun to see his thoughts. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, th this I will also say this: this is the kind of documentary that would usually just I would just like dismiss or or think like you know something that is so presented in such an objective way and kind of like 
you know, that sort of direct cinema, which is the kind of movies that the Maysles used to do, I usually don't respond to that at all. The fact that ED, the two Edies are so interesting and compelling as, as screen presences and, and the whole, their whole existence is so fascinating is what, yeah. you know, there's a real testament to that and there, there's a real uh, value in, I think, even though I'm not sure how to, what, how to react to what they're saying and how to react to them being put on film, I think it's, I think the idea that they were captured in, in film is is valuable in and of itself somehow if that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah and like i said i just think because i want to be the kind of person that loses my hair and becomes a fashion icon i just think that's amazing and there there's very few people that kind of have that kind of gumption that they just figure out a new way to live and that's what they did and uh, I, Alonzo, what you were saying, uh, I put on Twitter, anybody have any thoughts? And uh, my friend Alonzo Duralde, critic, he said, Little Edie is a fashion icon mostly due to her gift from turning available materials into couture. And I think that that's just true of Little Edie in general, is that she just took what was available to her, even the Maisels to a certain extent, and made it. <laughs> yeah. That's a good I would be interested to know. <laughs> How, how much success she personally had out of this movie uh, during her lifetime, you know? Do, do you know what happened? I know she told Well, her, her mother died a year after the release, and then she ended up selling Grey Gardens uh, with the, I think, with the contract that it be kept intact, uh, in that it, you know, not be destroyed, I guess, and to, I think... Uh, let me make sure I get this right. Uh, they sold it to Ben Bradley, uh, the uh, the editor of the Washington Post, and yeah, and then then she ended up uh, for a time she was actually doing like a cabaret performance in uh, in New York City, and I guess it was super terrible. <laughs> but people would just loved her so much, and so she did that, and. And then uh, she died in 2002 in Florida. And so uh, as far as I know, she, I think she had a pretty, pretty good little life, you know, for herself. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, it was definitely, she kind of lived off of being little Edie, I think for the kind of the rest of her life. And yeah, and then you even uh, I guess in the um, uh, uh, the Jerry Jerry in the movie, <laughs> um, the marble fawn as he's called by Little Edie, <laughs> uh, was found by uh, by the Maisels in uh, driving a taxi cab uh, later, and so they did a little uh, they they did a little I think follow up with him I believe, and uh, they. Uh, they, you know, I don't know. It's just one of those things that, it, however you were involved, it, even the birthday party guests, I guess, ended up. One of them ended up writing a book about the Maisels. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it also makes me think this is definitely some sort of like historical precursor to like reality television. You know what? I mean? Yeah. You know, like Real Housewives or whatever, in which mm -hmm. like every little character wants to have their one you know 15 minutes of fame and try to mm -hmm. use it the, the recognition just to get a little something yeah i think that's a, that is true i think that that's definitely true uh i did get one other just fun little comment from uh, amy adrian she says no one says the marble fawn quite like little edie well, um, yeah. <laughs> so that's very true uh, so there are a lot of um, related uh, art and movies um, to Great Gardens that have been influenced by it. Um, one of them is the documentary, The Beals of Great Gardens, which mm -hmm. they both, um, put together out of footage that they didn't use for the original movie. And I think it was released in 2006. And it's available also in the Criterion Collection. Right? Yeah. 
And I found it a little dry, to be honest. I mean, it wasn't bad, but I don't know. I just prefer the original. Yeah, you saw it's it's on the channel, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what is, is it just like a little more footage? Is it? Yeah, it's just them be kind of interviewed, and it it I don't know. I just like the the wackiness of the original a little bit more, whereas uh, the it was just a little bit more boring. Um, but it's not bad. Definitely check it out if you're a fan. Cool. There was also a musical. Uh, written and performed in the year 2006. It was on Broadway. Um, it was written by Doug Wright and Scott Franco and Michael Corey. Um, and we did you you saw the musical, right? You saw some of it. Um, I I I I know the music. I actually didn't have time to watch the uh, on YouTube. They have the musical, uh, but I have I do know the music, and it has Christine Ebersole. And Mary Louise Wilson playing the Beals, and they both won Tonys for their roles. And the music is is fun. I mean, they have a lot of the same music that's in the uh, movie, so uh, uh, it's T for two and things like that. So yeah, what's interesting I thought also is that Christine Ebersol in the first act it takes place um, in the past, let's say. And, and she plays Big Edie when she was a younger woman. And then in the second act, she plays Little Edie. And, you know, um, that's the second act takes place basically when what we see in the documentary once, mm. are, you know, in the decline or whatever. Yeah. So it was interesting. I, I saw some of it on the YouTube, uh, which you shared with me. And I thought it was interesting, even though... And this applies also to the 2009 HBO movie, which uh, was made uh, in 2009, starring Drew Barrymore and Jessica Lange as the Beals. And I think the, the thing with both of those is that um, I feel like they definitely want to make a case for, for both the Beals as sort of uh, inspirational, tragic, sympathetic figures, um, but they just can't capture the, the real people, you know what I mean? Yeah. Once you've seen the real thing, you're just like, even though I think Christian Ebersole and Drew Barrymore do a really good job of playing Little Edie, it's just, it's just not the same. I don't know what you think. Yeah. No, I agree. I feel like I don't really want to know the backstory of them. I don't know. I just... <laughs> I... I just like it being kind of a mystery and maybe that's not fair to them, but I could just kind of, it just takes away a little bit of the magic for me, I guess, but it's fine. It's perfectly entertaining television. <laughs> I think that, uh, that, yeah, the casting is right on. They did a great job. I think that Jean Triplehorn is great as Jackie Kennedy. She does a very good job and the whole scene with them, with Jackie, is very good <laughs> that was very very good uh, and it's 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 perfectly fine i just i don't know i just really i'm just maybe too attached to the original uh that i was just like i don't really want to know how they became the people they became i just want to appreciate the moment in time that's captured yeah i haven't seen the the hbo movie since it, the year it came out um when i watched it on tv but from what i remember and not actually watching the documentary now i think you're onto something when you when you say that it loses something that i think um i think it kind of explains the their character yeah right? which is kind of like it makes it into a you know because it's a fictional narrative film it makes it into a it puts it into a specific package of like what we would expect for character arcs instead of the more fascinating questions of just seeing these people be themselves and, and go what the hell is going on with these people you know which is far more, I don't know, puts the brain to work in a different way, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right. I think with that, we just have to uh, ask ourselves the question that we ask ourselves at the end of every episode, which is, where do you think this fits into the pretentious scale? Do you think this is a hmm. pretentious movie, an unpretentious movie? Is it worth it? And who would you recommend Hmm. 
It's a hard question. You go first. Let me think. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, I agree with you that it's a hard one this time. I think it's, I don't think it's a, here's the thing. I think it, I think the, the ambition of the measles and the thing that I still sticks in my car about the movie is this sort of like cool objective view, which I think makes it a little bit of a pretentious film and it's something that I don't like. That being said, the characters and what, what they bring to it makes me think that it is worth watching. And um, it is just a, a, it is unlike anything else. It's like a unique experience, especially if you enjoy this sort of thing. If you enjoy John Waters, if you enjoy, uh, you know, uh, campy stuff, um, that sort of humor, then uh, you should watch it. You should, you should uh, make up your mind for yourself, is what I would say. Yeah, I, I don't think it's for everyone. I think some people just can't get past like why are they living this way and this is disgusting and 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 you know and then other people just have you know different issues, which is fine. Uh but when I say it's I guess it's a little bit pretentious. It's a little. <laughs> but I think it's also just so charming that it 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 certainly won me over when I saw it. Uh, so I don't know if I, I guess I would say like on the pretension scale, maybe a seven out of 10, okay. six. Maybe it's this. I think it might, I think it might be something where it, it kind of doesn't fit the scale because I think the, the, the filmmakers want it to be a pretentious film, but the subject of the film are, are fighting with them, you know? And so it's kind of like, it's just like really interesting uh, competition of what this movie is going to be. Yeah. It's like a pretentious but trashy <laughs> kind of maybe is that fair? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's just a one of a kind experience. It's I can't think of any. I mean, I you can make the reality TV comparisons and still, but I don't know. It's just its own thing, and uh, I I just even like even their attempt to kind of go back and and even do. Uh, similar things didn't really work as well it's just it's it's just a it's just a very unique movie so that's why I say I couldn't really recommend it to everybody but I think anybody I know who's more of an experienced film core (laughs) I think could find things to appreciate about it so yeah I think everyone who's curious about it should give it a watch yeah yeah that's interesting that you you saw the the fictional version before mm-hmm. so that 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 didn't kind of encourage you to to watch the documentary huh um back in I, I 2009 the, the fictional version was fine i obviously didn't get to the documentary until now but i don't think interesting it's interested it's just it just you know. didn't happen mm-hmm. yeah but it, it, i just love it i think it's great so uh so yeah so next month and it's your month to choose. So why don't you tell us what you decided? That is right. So it's starting to get uh, warm in New York. It's June. So I thought let's have a movie from one of the most warmest and tropical countries <laughs> in the world. I'm talking about <laughs> Finland, of course. <laughs> the, movie, um, the Other Side of Hope, directed by Aki Karismaki and... Um, the movie that came out a couple of years ago in 2017, and uh, it's a movie that I like a lot, and I like the work of Aki Karismaki a lot. It's also not a movie for everyone. It's a very specific deadpan humor sort of thing, but I'm really interested to see what Rachel thinks. I'm really uh, hopeful that if you will check it out. I think it's a really funny movie and very enjoyable and also very touching in a lot of ways. So... That's what we're going to look uh, talk about next time. And that's called The Other Side of Hope. Okay, great. Well, check that out. That would be really fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Because I remember uh, in our, t- I think, our best of 2017 uh, podcast, I, I remember you mentioning it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, Pretty sure. That makes total sense. Probably talking about how funny it was. Mm-hmm. All right. So I guess that's it for this month. Uh, this episode of the Criterion Project. Um, Rachel, why don't you tell people how to find you, even though they probably <laughs> have already found you. So, you know. 
Yes, you can find me all over social media, Rachel's Reviews, and also on Rotten Tomatoes and on iTunes and YouTube. So make sure to give us a thumbs up if you're watching on YouTube. Give us your ratings and reviews if you're listening on iTunes. And if you have any suggestions that you'd like us to cover, just put in the comment section. We'd love to hear or follow us on, on Twitter. And I'm also at the Homeworkies podcast. It's a the great purveyor of independent film. <laughs> it's Homeworkies podcast. <laughs> so that's fun too. Great. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Coco Hits New York. That's really the best way to uh, get in touch with whatever I'm doing, writing, or et cetera. So, great. Yeah. Please feel free to contact me. Tell me. Uh, I would be interested, actually, to uh, hear what people have to say about Great Gardens and if they have anything to say about this, you know, conflict that I have of how to feel about the movie and whether or not the movie is uh, what they're trying to say about the subjects of the yeah. Yes, definitely. Let us know and go out there and be a staunch. Go out there and be staunch, a staunch woman, staunch man. Go out there and be be like be like little Edie. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll talk to you all later. Bye. Bye.